Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for June 14th, 2022, quarter on 2, 10 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including the potential for a new tropical system to be forming in the Caribbean over the next several days. Where could it go and who could it impact? Well, we'll go ahead and find out. And just what exactly does the 2022 Atlantic hurricane season have in store? Well, let's go ahead and find out. Taking a wild look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we noticed that activity is definitely on the increase. In the East Pacific Basin, we have Tropical Storm Blast, Invest Area 93E, and then in the Atlantic, we have Invest Area 93L, and then we have a tropical wave coming off the coast of Africa. Now, with the exception of the uh, tropical wave coming off of Africa, all of these other systems have some land concern over the next several days with 93E and 93L being the highest potential for land concern over the next several days. So if we look here at the Eastern Pacific overview, we notice that we have tropical storm blasts over here in the East Pacific Basin. This is no longer a land concern for portions of Mexico. However, this will be moving off towards the north and west and could impact this tiny island over here. And so we will be watching for impacts to that area over the next couple of days. And then we also have Invest Area 93E. Initially, this will be moving off towards the north and west here, but we'll get trapped eventually, and we could be dealing with a storm that could end up looping back on itself and potentially impacting Guatemala City over here and other areas. In the tropical Atlantic, we have Invest Area 93L with a 40% chance of developing over the next several days as this begins to move off towards the north and west, and development chances on this are highly conditional on whether or not the storm actually stays away from land. And we'll talk about that here in a moment. Looking at tropical storm blasts in the East Pacific, just a real quick look here. We notice that we definitely have kind of that shrimp kind of appearance here. Definitely a curly Q structure with decent banding. Uh, there is some dry air uh, over here on the western side of the circulation being pulled in from uh, continental Mexico. We'll have to watch this over the next uh, you know, couple of hours to the next day or two. Uh, but right now, the National Hurricane Center does expect this to become a hurricane over the next several days as this moves off towards the north and west. You can see this little tiny island here is in that five-day cone, so we will have to monitor that. But otherwise, uh, this is not expected to impact much coastal Mexico at all. Now, looking uh, real quickly at Invest Area 93E, we can see that this area is beginning to consolidate a little bit more quicker today, and we've had definitely some broad circulation beginning to show up here. We notice that on the visible satellite, we do have some westerly winds here uh, far to the south of any low-level circulation, and then we also have these easternlies over here. And what this is telling me is we have this broad area of cyclonic vorticity uh, within this region, and this will help to induce tropical cyclone formation over the next couple of days as this generally heads off towards the north and west. Eventually, this could be trapped underneath uh, and kind of pivoting around 93L and could actually kind of swoop back and impact portions of Central America. And we'll talk about that more so in the coming days. Now, finally, taking a look at Invest Area 93L today, we've had a storm that's been rapidly organizing this afternoon. We noticed, first of all, we have a large area of shower and thunderstorm activity all across this area. We also noticed that there is a little bit of a low-level circulation beginning to develop here very close to the coastline here of Central America. That's the coastline for reference, and our low-level circulation is somewhere in here. So really only about 100 or so miles away from the coast, we have a developing storm. Now we can tell that we have a low-level circulation, or that one is inferred, by the fact that we have some westernlies here being indicated. It's very hard to see, but these low-level cloud features here are in the westerly direction and kind of wrapping around the circulation in, in a cyclonic form here or counterclockwise. This indicates that we have a broad and elongated circulation, but one that is definitely closed off. And with the amount of convection that we have, uh, this will help to tighten that low-level circulation and begin to consolidate that more into a closed low-level circulation as it begins to drift off towards the north and west here. Now, in the mid-levels, uh, this is the, the 700 millibar vorticity, so the spin in the atmosphere at about 700 millibars. So we're looking uh, slightly up here now, kind of in the middle part of the atmosphere. 
And what we notice here is that there's actually a decent uh, circulation here that is indicated by the GOES-16 the, the GOES satellite. And we notice that it is actually closed here. Now, if we jump down to, to 5,000 feet, we notice how that it is strung out here, but there is an enhanced area uh, closer to Central America and Panama. And this is the area that we'll be watching closely as it tries to move off towards the north and west. If you look here at the GFS forecast, the 850 millibar vorticity, so the spin in the atmosphere at about 5,000 feet off the ground. This is the 12Z run valve for 2 p.m. this afternoon. We notice the 12Z GFS actually has a pretty good depiction of what's happening here. For reference, this is Tropical Storm Blast over here, Invest Area 93E, and then Invest Area 93L. Now, we notice that, again, the vorticity is very strong out associated with 93L currently, but watch what happens. On the GFS, that begins to consolidate relatively quickly, and we have a storm as early as tomorrow evening uh, that is down here. And that's not necessarily improbable. The development chances are certainly increasing given, uh, you know, given the trends today. Now, the upper-level environment is going to be somewhat questionable. If we go back and look here at the zoomed-out visible satellite, uh, what we can tell here is that there is some upper level winds here. We notice that we have these high upper level cirrus clouds blowing uh, really from east to west, indicating that we have some westerly shear across this region, which is going to be prohibitive of significant organization over the next few days. And we can see even on the GFS forecast that any storm that does develop in here uh, will be encountering some of that shear from a developing uh, upper level anticyclone over really near Belize and the Yucatan Peninsula. Now, over the next several days, that begins to translate. We actually have a storm here that is crossing the Yucatan Peninsula over the next several days. Now, a big uh, hampering factor here is going to be this big ridge of high pressure that is out here to the north of this system. If we back up here, we notice that we have a big ridge of high pressure that is basically trying to force the storm into Central America at this time. And that is certainly possible, but we also have a big trough that's way off the screen here diving down, and that might be able to erode that ridge just enough that the storm tries to sneak northward towards Cancun and Belize and the Yucatan Peninsula. So it would not surprise me if we have a storm that is closing in on this area by this weekend, uh, by Friday at the earliest. And then eventually this begins to move around and then crosses into the Bay of Campeche and begins to intensify where then it makes landfall along coastal Mexico on the Atlantic side once again. And then we also have Invest 93L or 93E down here getting dangerously close here to Guatemala City. On the European solution, we notice that this is vastly different. So the two models begin to diverge. There is a circulation here, but it just gets pivoted into Central America really. On the ensemble forecast, we see that the GFS ensembles have actually toned down on storm development, but there is still a wide range of possibilities for a storm to be in, in this region uh, over the next couple of days or so. And the European ensembles from the Zero Z run do somewhat sort of agree, uh, more so though they agree in the long range something could be forming out here in the Bay of Campeche. Now, real quickly, looking at what could be happening across the main development region over the next several weeks. Again, this is within the five-day period. So this is at the end of the five-day period here uh, by next or by this upcoming Sunday. Now, we notice that we have a uh, kind of a low-level circulation here that's moving off the coast of Africa. This is a tropical wave, one of those astro uh, African easterly waves that's moving off the coast here. And this will be progressing into the Atlantic Basin, but it will be encountering some pretty strong upper-level winds across this area. Very hostile conditions for development at this time. If we look here at the 200 millibar wind pattern, we notice that we have these pretty strong upper-level winds here. So we're not expecting significant development over the next several days. But if we look here at the GFS and if we look at the 200 millibar uh, wind anomalies here, if we go out in time, we notice that we will have a decent amount of uh, winds here that begin to encroach on the easterly trend. And if we go back to the zero Z run, we notice that over time, uh, we begin to have that become generally easterly across this area, which prohibits significant shear. 
So the shear looks to be on the decline over the next several days and weeks across the tropical Atlantic. And uh, there are some signals out there that point to early July activity in the main development region. So it is quite possible that by come early July, we have a tropical system to watch coming off the coast of Africa. So we'll keep you in tune with that. All right. With that being said, hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael O'Malley. I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.